Hey guys, uh, hopefully have a little bit better audio today. Uh, there are a couple of steps I can take further to maybe cordon off the audio so that the camera captures it a little bit better. But the, the camera here, the mount that I'm using, is putting the camera closer to me. And so let's just see if that helps with the audio, the volume. Um, this is a mail call video. Now I may have some overlap with a recent mail call I did, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, but I have uh, I've made some neat purchases, got some great deals uh, on some lot items, and then some just kind of once in a lifetime items that I wanted to go ahead and pick up before you know something happened, uh, that sort of thing. Some, some of the things that might have been on my want list for a while, you know, and then if they appear on the used market, you're like, whoa, that's something I might have picked up full retail. So I'll definitely snag it if it's in the used market, right? Uh, and so let's let's go through it, huh? Now I always start these mail call videos saying that I'm gonna show the items first and then talk about them later, but it never works out. So let's just not <laughs> worry about the, that this time. Um, uh, but let's 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 let us give you a little bit of a heads up about what's coming. Um, we have a uh, I've got my base plate for my uh, carbon razor that was uh, my prize for the lather games. I have the milder base plate for that. I've got a uh, an eBay lot that had a cool custom brush handle from Wild West and uh, a, a Mercure that I've got some questions about. I have a palette and brush that I am looking forward to trying out and it had the, just the right attributes to it and so I went ahead and picked it up. I got a Talbot shaving soap. I had a, I have a Noble Otter Udi Wood and a special declaration grooming soap. I have a vintage Bostonian Gillette. I have a couple of carved base plates that I ordered. I've got a 345 soaps uh, soap that you've actually seen me use once, but I figured I'd show it here in this mail call. I've got some aftershaves that I ordered from Midwest Shaving Supply. I've got the Pearl Flexi replacement that they sent me. I have a, a nice little lot that was a terrific deal that's got a, a Holy Cow soap. It also had the Noble Otter soap in with it and uh, some Sterling Bar soaps. And I have a Bob Farver shaving brush handle. I have, okay, that's the, uh, that's the general idea. Yes. All right. Um, so onto the, onto the detail. I don't know how I'm going to keep everything separate um, or keep track of what I've shown you. Um, with the lather games, let's start off with that. I have Oh, and then a uh, titanium handle from T-Bam, T-I-B-A-M on eBay. So here, and I've shown this to you before, here is my carve, I'm sorry, uh, carbon shaving razor, and it's tit their titanium version, and it's so amazingly light. And I took this on a trip and before and it was before the austere august started so i was able to shave with it before august started and i had one shave i just had it for just one or two days before austere august started so i was only able to do one shave with it and i, I don't know if this base plate it was it was kind of scrapey uh, a lot of audio feedback uh, a lot of bris a lot of uh, edge movement on this razor and indeed some people do like that um, and so when the, uh, the base plate that was a, a milder version of this, this is the plus base plate, recommended by the carbon shaving guy. Uh, when I described the different adjustables that I liked, he said, I'll give you the plus. And wonderful, generous, generous thing that he did uh, to provide a prize for the lather games. And uh, they come in this, uh, you know, they're working on their carbon footprint. You're not going to find any plastic in their materials that they uh, ship their stuff in. And here is, on the used market, I found a base plate 
I'm going to have to dig it out. Man, I tell you what, this thing feels like a like an angel's wing. I mean, it's so light, but you know it's super strong because it's titanium, right? Well, the guy uh, I bought it from was very kind, and he, oh, nice, he threw in some blade samples. Now, Bosch Cods usually don't get along with me, but these Wizomet Iridiums, Super Iridiums, are uh, very good blades for me, and, and those aren't exactly cheap blades, and he sent me two tucks of those. That's very cool. And so uh, this is that same type of bag that uh, Carbon Razor sends. So here is that base plate. Look at this guy. Look how light he is. They, they've cut away so much. Um, and then they have etched right here C6 titanium. Uh, so, I mean, it's... Uh, you know really pretty amazing here and let's go ahead and slap it on the the razor here and look at that look how funky that is now I don't really care about the appearance of a base plate too much it's just kind of a bonus eye candy if you will and there we go and so he is a more mild base plate. Um, I expected, oh yeah, minus. There is a minus right there on the edge of the base plate. And so this is the mild version. And uh, really pretty neat and attractive. So we'll see if that mild is a little smoother. Looking forward to trying that out. These razors are selling pretty well on the second uh, on the secondary market. I would not sell this one because it was a prize uh, it was a gift, a donation, but the base plate I purchased with my own money on the secondary market. And so I would not have a problem reselling it if perhaps it doesn't uh, work well for me. And I would, you know, for this razor that was a prize, I, I, would, I might potentially trade it, you know, for something else really cool if this razor doesn't uh, work very well for me. Um, so let me put... Let me hold up both of these two base plates here for you just to be able to see. So this is the plus one, and here is the minus. Pretty wild. A terrific finish on these. The quality of workmanship just looks amazing and very high-end. Uh, an exact precision, just a, a crisp. There's a... If you make it too crisp, then you can kind of have edges sometimes. But then if you do it perfect, then it it seems crisp, but then it feels great. And it's it's like the edges have been taken down just enough to where they don't look rounded off at all, but they don't have that sharpness to them. And that's, that's really where they have landed with this razor. So in terms of the quality of workmanship, it looks very high with this this company so far from what I've seen. All right, so I, uh, I got that base plate. I wasn't expecting to buying it, expecting to buy it, but it came across on the used market. Never seen a mild base plate. It was at a good price, and so I pulled the trigger. Um, now, uh, relating to that razor, this is a titanium handle from T-Bam, and here's a little funny thing. I bought this same version from T-Bam a couple years ago, but I bought the one that on these little facets here, it has knurling. See, this one is solid on those, on those facet areas. It does not have knurling. You know what? The, the one with knurling, it didn't actually, it was a very soft knurling. And the knurling didn't grab a hold of my fingers. And it was actually a little unsteady in my hands. And what the, what the knurling did, what that pattern did was keep me from having contact with the handle. It, gave, it let air, it reduced my contact surface. And so I thought, you know what, excuse me, if there's a backfire where that reduces the contact surface, I thought it was an attractive handle. I thought, what if I then bought the one that has the same cool pattern that I liked and thickness that I liked? It's a little bit longer than I might like, but, uh, but if it doesn't have that knurling and that etching, uh, groove, the grooves is a better word, 
on the individual facets, maybe that will give me more surface area when wet and it will work well. And so I took it along to use it just in case I wanted to with the carbon razor there, but I never ended up using it. So this is going to be forthcoming in the future and we'll see if the, the lack of the grooving on these particular facets here actually gives me more grip. Not something that I saw coming. We'll just see. I'll have to wait for all this stuff. I'll have to wait for September. The good news is we're past the halfway point. Got maybe, I don't know, 11 more days in August, 12, something like that. So it's not super far away. But when you have some cool gear, sometimes even just a couple of days wait is, is tough, right? You guys know how I feel. Um, when uh, the, um, da, 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 the Bob Farver handle... He was so kind, he sent along a Sterling soap sample. So it's about a month worth of shaving soap. And Mountain Man's an awesome scent. I like it a lot. And so this is the Bob Farver handle. He's got a couple different colors of purple in here. You can see the mica that he added into a translucent area. And it is one that's going to look a lot better in person than on the uh, camera or video. It's made for 26 millimeter knots. It's, it's a little shorter than I might like. However, the other ergonomics look like it might be good. And he was offering it on sale because he was trying to buy some supplies. And I, he was on Facebook and, uh, and offered up a sale. And I thought, hey, good price. I don't have one of his handles. He doesn't have any coin or anything on the bottom. But as you can see, look at the nice polish he's got on that. Bob Farver. And so I'm looking forward to uh, putting some kind of knot in there. And ergonomics seem pretty good as it sits right now, so very cool. It really is a, a beautiful pour, and he did a great job with the quality of the of the handle and the finish. So really happy about that. The uh, another brush, uh, I had a Paladin PK forty seven years ago, and I really enjoyed the ergonomics of the handle. I enjoyed the backbone of the knot. I enjoyed the tips everything about it but back at that time I didn't have quite as much money floating around and the handle is kind of short on that one and I was getting my fingers goopy all the time and at that point back then I didn't enjoy that about it now I kind of don't mind if the brush is great then I'll get my fingers wet right well I've been looking at the paladins and watching and and they, they have these cards that so often on the used market, you'll be able to see the knot code, be able to jump over to Paladin's website, read the code, uh, paste it onto the find you know page there, so you can find the knot notes for that particular code. And this one uh, seemed maybe to be something I might be interested in. And it had the Clio handle shape. And this is kind of like that Persian jar handle shape, very similar to the handle shape of the Connaught Shaving Jade Faux Jade Brush that I've been using all August. And so I know I like that ergonomic situation. And so then I, I've never tried the Clio shape, but I just assume I'm gonna like it as well. The Paladin lineup has the Chief, I believe, and that has the potential to be a nice handle for me too. But then when I saw this Clio, in this wonderful kind of graphite pattern i thought wow that's gorgeous and then the knot notes here they didn't i don't know if i read them wrong but they didn't really seem like it, it was going to be a brush that was 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 overly jelly it wasn't super firm and so maybe it'll be a nice happy place for me so i'm looking to try it out i i do see some hooking on some of the tips on many of the tips and so that probably tells me that the uh, bleaching process here, we're gonna get a certain level of gelling on these tips. So um, right now it's got a good bit of backbone, but I'm not too worried about that because that can change once everything gets wet. And it doesn't really look like it's been used too many times anyway. So really looking forward to uh, having a Paladin in my little group, and we'll see if this one uh, matches what I like in a brush. And I did get the card that came along with it. My other one did not have a card. 
that is a wonderful piece of provenance there that uh, tells you all about the brush and uh, the numbers and this is the select badger it has a loft of 52.5 free loft of 48 so I guess they're you know talking about a glue bump in there so very cool and that's the Clio shape and then the graphite is the color and then with uh, why don't we keep going with the brushes now this one I think I've already shared with you guys I got a uh, handful of brushes and I've uh, one of those was this neat sterling that was the first generation of sterling finest badgers really enjoyed this one a lot and along with it I was I got a deal and came this one this is the two bed 2BED not from AP Shave Co. It's a synthetic. I think maybe it's going to have too much backbone and springiness for me, but I'm going to have fun trying it out. And I think I really like this shape handle. It's a little small, very small, but I think I like this shape a lot. That's good. That's always good to learn. And so that one's uh, coming up. I still haven't been able to use it quite yet. Uh, Author's Ridge is a uh, soap from Talbot Shaving and this one's been used uh, some I like it some outdoorsy uh, kind of stuff um, and uh, so looking forward to trying that I know that Talbot Shaving of course has a uh, are well known for having a terrific soap base so I know the performance is going to be there for that one and I believe that's all the brushes. So uh, here is a wonderfully conditioned for its age case. And look what happens. The razor is lifted up. I haven't seen one of these before. The lever pulls the razor up so that you can take it out. Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? These little, these little arms there. How about that? And this is a Bostonian. It has the Criterion uh, type pattern on the handle. I really wish my phone would uh, focus um, uh, closely, you know, but it doesn't when I'm in kind of selfie mode there. Someday I may try to do, uh, move it around. Now, look, we've, do, we do have some bent teeth. This tooth here is bent in. And I think one other one, maybe, maybe this one, is a little bit less bent in uh, but this is the new improved I believe the Bostonian is a new improved it might be a new standard but it's one of those and so it's probably gonna be a little bit too aggressive for me but I've always wanted to check out the Bostonian and this one I found on eBay for a great deal really surprisingly great deal the knob comes out and so it's a three-piece here it has the long shaft there I wonder if it's plated in silver. It kind of looks like, doesn't it? And then what does it say inside? It does have a serial number, so maybe I could do some tracing there. And yeah, yeah, the two opposite teeth here are bent. If you run into that, I think the current advice is not to bend them back yourself unless you are a highly qualified metalsmith. Um, and I, you know, maybe, a, Something you might do is, is warm it up to where you can gradually bend it back. But the, I think guys often say that if you bend it back without a ton of care, it'll just kind of break off. You don't want that. It's better to have, it'll, usually they will shave fine if they've got a bent tooth or two. And uh, so looking forward to trying out the Bostonian with the, looks like a, a super spy bat cave kind of situation where the control panel appears out of the floor right pretty neat I didn't expect that when I when I got it wonderful deal on that one I think there are probably some collectors out there who didn't see that sale now you know it, it, it's got some some issues you know but I think I, I got it for a steal uh, brand new I showed you guys my stainless steel carve Christopher Bradley razor the uh, 001 version and I'm such a huge fan of my brass one I love it so much I'm using it all month a very 
honored position in my yearly shave routine is what I choose for austere August. And uh, with for my brass one, I've got just about every possible combination of plates. Um, definitely all the solid bars that come close to uh, to being good for my face. I think I go all the way up to E, maybe even F, and I can't even shave with E and F unless I'm using a razor blade that's in the 100 use duration uh, age there. Um, but with a normal fresh blade, I can't even shave with the E or the F. I also have a mask because I started to collect the open combs as well. And I loved it because I was able to spread the expense out every couple of months. I'd order another one. Now I realized I was having to pay extra for shipping, but you know, it let me spread the cost out over, over a year or two. Um, and I got my collection of, of plates. And so one that I didn't have uh, is the open comb for the double A, the mildest one and I didn't have the open comb version of it. I've got the open comb A, I think, but I didn't have the open comb double A, and I really do enjoy the carve open comb razors, uh, the plates in that Christopher Bradley razor, and so I, uh, I went ahead and purchased the double uh, A open comb, and it'll have the approximate aggression level of the solid bar A, which I definitely enjoy. And the open comb just has a slightly different feel, and I do enjoy that. So I went ahead and ordered that. You know why I ordered this one? Because I already had an existing carve order in place. Uh, I knew that I was going to order this one. And so I thought, well, might as well save on shipping. Is there something else I want, like in the brass? And I, so I added that on. Well, the main guy I wanted to get was this guy, stainless. I've got a B, C, and D. Uh, solid bar base plates for my carved stainless. That's the way it came. And an A is such a fun base plate for me in the brass that I thought, you know what? Let me go ahead and order the stainless version because you know you can kind of get a lot of your money back if you re if I decide I don't want the duplication, the redundancy of the stainless and the brass, um, I'll be able to, to I won't get all my money back. But uh, I'll get most, and I'll enjoy trying out the A base plate here. And so this is how Carve sends currently the base plates, a little plastic bag for each one, and then a cool little box. From Midwest Shaving, um, there was a guy that posted a gripe about Midwest Shaving and how he wasn't... Uh, uh, or, or maybe try a blade. I can't remember what he was complaining about, but uh, there was something like where his order was taken forever or something. And unfortunately, the guy came into a Reddit area where we are huge fans and have almost all had terrific customer service from the guy behind tryablade.com. We all, uh, most of us have, have used him to, to try out a couple of exotic blades, that sort of thing. And so he has a reputation in our community of very solid customer service. And we're talking COVID times here, and he's got a life and all that. That's probably what was causing the, the issue. Well, uh, most of the guy's complaints kind of fell on deaf ears. But you know what I learned during his griping? I learned that, and I can't remember his name. I'm really sorry. Um, the guy who does the triblade.com has a, a parent site for normal shaving purchases, not just blades. He's got a Midwest Shaving is a place to get other kind of shaving needs. I didn't even know that before. Didn't even know that site existed. So I bookmarked it and I'll put it on my rotation to check out every once in a while. And you know what he had on there? Um, he had a lot of stuff that I maybe didn't care for or, or already had, uh, something like it. But you know what he had? He had some fine accoutrements aftershaves. And here's the thing, a while back, a year or two ago, fine took their aftershaves and they bumped them up to $20. Well, he had these at the old price. And so I thought, awesome, I'll buy them at the old price. It's a sale, you know? And so I bought a, a platinum and two uh, American blend. And 
when the platinum got here, you can it was as you you saw it was in this plastic bag. It was in the bubble bag here. It was also in a Ziploc bag, but the the scent here it leaked during transit, and this is how much is left. So you know 60% leaked out. Well, here's the thing. Just now before I made this video, I went to check and see if the cap had loosened up. It wasn't. It was tight. He didn't send it to me wrong. It was tight. And so there must be some kind of manufacturer's defect in the cap to let a little bit of it come out. You know, that sort of thing. Maybe a, a bubble in the glass, you know, where it comes up there. Because um, it is deaf. It was deaf. And look, it's never actually been opened. You can, because it, it finally is breaking that, that plastic ring. There we go. So there must be some kind of defect in this, maybe this little plastic stopper there or something. And you know what he did? Without a moment's hesitation, without me having to explain much of anything at all, I just described the situation in general terms and bam, he sent me a replacement out and I've got that uh, in another box. And so shout out to Midwest Shaving and tryablade.com uh, for excellent customer service. And I mean, he did about as good as you can do. This wasn't loose. It was in a bubble bag. And this was inside a Ziploc bag. And, you know, it still leaked. But he stood behind his products. And so good for him. The, I believe I, I put this out on a mail call already, 345 Soaps, White Buffalo. I, like, I think the artwork's pretty neat on this one, and the performance, I'm very happy with this. I did, uh, a few weeks ago, before Austere August started, I did use this one. I like the scent quite a bit. Kind of reminds me of maybe Seville or some kind of barbershop or something like that. Or American Blend, maybe. Ooh, I won't have to compare this with American Blend. Could this be a Reeve Gauche, Yves Saint Laurent Reeve Gauche clone? Or maybe it's just got enough similar notes that it reminds me of it. I don't know. Maybe that's why I liked it so much. Anyway, the performance was very nice. It reminded me of Declaration Grooming Milk Steak, which is a highly regarded base. Um, and so this was a, uh, a donation by Matt Dinger's Yo on Reddit. And he tried it out. And uh, he decided to contact me and see if I, I wanted to try it out too. So he uh, sent it to me for free. Awesome guy, that's for sure. And then the uh, here is what Pearl sent me. So I had the Pearl Flexi Razor that I've shown on this channel a few times. And I discovered that I had to kind of seat the blade and center the blade by wiggling the base plate, like the, um, with it not being tight, if this, we can pretend this is the pearl flexi, I would wiggle the top cap and the base plate kind of together and it would center up the blade and then I would lock it down and that was a way to make sure the blade centered properly. And it, it when I did that, it was wonderful and it was aligned properly, but several times when I just threw a blade on it and tightened everything down, it was misaligned. And they made the head wide enough where you couldn't take the end tabs and manipulate and change the, the razor blade. Well, you know what? Since I discovered a workaround for it, I thought, well, you know, if I have to use this razor forever, that's no problem. I've got this workaround. But you know what? I, I've been happy with Pearl as a company providing me uh, some good customer service with the questions that I had I, I was I wanted to support them as a company who came out with a premium material lifetime material and they didn't go the Mercur route and do everything pot metal or the Parker or the Jagger or the Muley they didn't make something that was pot metal and try to put a big spin on it it's brass in the middle of the stuff and then it's plated and just like the vintage Gillettes, right? That are still wonderful to this day. And so I, I wanted to be able to kind of brag about that in my videos. And so I did ask them for a replacement and they provided it. I even, I made them a video describing the little workaround that I made and I'm still gonna make a video 
um, and and uh, because that was part of a shave, I'm going to make a explicit video about the uh, the workaround for the pearl shaving, the fifth generation. Now this guy here is the seventh generation, um, and they sent it to me free of charge. I will need to, they said, send my fifth generation back to them, and I agreed to that before they before we did anything. Well, you know what they did? They sent me all the cool cards again. They sent me another ink, another inkwell stand here, part of the package, right? And then here is the seventh generation. And I don't, you know, I might get both of them together and see if I can. This is a big old razor. It's heavy, right? But you get used. I got used to it, the other one. And so I, I'm confident I'll get used to this one too. Um, so, and I haven't actually pulled it out of the packaging yet um, to, to look at it. My other one didn't adjust any, it didn't actually adjust down to the one. Let's see if this one does. Oh wow, it goes to the 0.5. So they fixed that part of it. Everything looks pretty, pretty straight. The, the plating that they have uh, does have a little bit of undulation here and if you look across it in a really critical way you can see how it's just not dead on exactly uh, perfect but um, we, we're just talking about a, a razor here we're not you know trying to calibrate the space shuttle um, and and if you don't even look at it closely I mean with a really discerning eye you're not even going to notice it um, so uh, yeah everything looks uh, pretty good there. Let me open it up all the way. It's a little easier to adjust than my first one. Do I see any? Not at first glance. We'll just they and they and he kind of offered once I described my situation. He said the problem had been fixed and he would send me a new one and so I said okay because then if he fixes it then with all my shaves that I bring onto YouTube and I show you guys then maybe that does his company a favor by uh, me not having to talk about a workaround you know and so that, that that's why I accepted the replacement even though I had a workaround that was going to make it enjoyable um, so looking forward to trying that guy out I can't because of austere August I've got to wait a while right so the pearl flexi Looks like a nice piece. We'll see if the changes they made make everything work. Then I purchased a uh, just a whole gaggle of, of things and it was at a good price. And the reason that I um, actually know he had a lot and he just had several things that I wanted. And so I picked up all the things I wanted. He had a very good price on these sterling soaps love the sterling soaps and these two particular scents I'm a huge fan of this is a uh, the Mont Blanc I think uh, uh, dupe and then this is Victor and Rolf spice bomb and I, I love that one too I have the shaving soaps for both of those and then he sent along a couple of samples Ben Franklin you want something spicy I tell you what this is kind of spicy and crazy the Ben Franklin is a, uh, a very savory, uh, it's got frankincense and uh, some other spices in there. The description on our website talks about it being like a old man's pantaloons. And I can see that, but it's not in a bad way per se. Just think old spicy, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, maybe a little musty. Um, no, not musty. Yeah, that whole man sweat vibe that they had with the description, that's not really, that was more funny than, than real. Uh, and I don't think I would have a problem shaving with this at all. Uh, it's definitely in that frankincense and family uh, with all those uh, spicy uh, kind of scents. And so I think it's a neat place. And one that has a weird name, but a scent that I love is Pharaoh's Dreamsicle. It's got those spices with the kind of creamy orange and... Uh, it is a lot classier than the scent name suggests. And then, for just a few dollars, I added on to what I was buying, Long Rifle, because I have tried one of their soaps before, and the performance is really pretty.
pretty nice. And so I had not tried leather stocking, the scent before, so I decided to uh, try it. It's got kind of a kind of a neat scent. It does remind me of some things out there. I think maybe there is a Soap Commander scent that's kind of similar to this. Um, but uh, I, I could be wrong. Uh, but it's a good performance and it was super cheap. Almost like a sample, almost the price of a sample. And so I figured, hey, why don't we try another long rifle scent out? I can always just give that away for free or something like that. And then, uh, now this one, as you can see, Udi Wood is here written. And I haven't done the research yet about this particular Noble Otter run, but I'm guessing it's kind of a limited edition because if they're gonna not print real labels for it, then they're not gonna make too many of them, right? And so I need to research and find out exactly the, uh, the run that was done here um, and, and how many were done just so that I can know uh, kind of the history of it. It's not a strong scent. And you can tell it's been used a, a good bit here. Uh, maybe 60% remains. But I, I think I like it. And Udi Ood, I maybe said Udi Wood. I'm sorry, because it's spelled Udi Ood. O-U-D-Y-O-O-D is how I'm reading that. And so I guess it's supposed to be extra Udi. Um, so we'll see. We'll see and try that out. Okay. Uh, oh, and I did get the splash with that. And one of the reasons why... I want to look it up is because if I really like the scent, then I will decide whether or not to keep the splash. Because these days I'm I'm kind of starting to shift toward one or two base balms or uh, post-shave conditioning things like maybe the uh, the Tiger. Um, what's that orangey one? Um, Lucky Tiger. Uh, or a witch hazel thing, Sayers perhaps, right after the shave. And then the cologne can be where the main scent comes. It lasts longer than a balm and uh, both in shelf life and in terms of the stability of it on your body. And so I think I'm gonna phase out of uh, the aftershaves. However, if I discover that was a supremely limited run and I'm never gonna have the aftershave, then maybe I'll, uh, or the uh, cologne, then maybe I'll keep the aftershave and use it, that kind of thing. But yeah, I'm debating about selling a lot of my aftershaves because I'm not on purpose, but I've just kind of amassed a good collection of them. And if I switch to colognes and use those mainly, then maybe I need to, instead of thinking about these aftershaves as, you know, use them up, why not? Uh, maybe I could sell them and get some money for them, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and then... Um, then have uh, that can pay back some of the things that I've you know all these purchases that I'm showing you guys uh, And then I think I think that's pretty much it for today's mail call except for one last thing. I have resisted buying this soap For several months I gravitated toward it because of the label. I love the label but I read the description of it online and it didn't really sound like something I was gonna enjoy. In addition, the soap base is a good one, but it's one where I have to use a good bit of product, so it doesn't last quite as long for me. But when I saw this used for a very good price, I could hold back no longer. I'd seen it used kind of more of a full, you know, some people sell used soap, but they kind of try to charge you a good bit uh, because they're trying to recoup their costs and they're not actually charging you a, 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 a good competitive used soap price. Um, and so I passed up those pretty easily because they were almost retail, right? A couple of different times it came up and I, I thought, man, that's such a great label. I'm a patriotic dude. I served in the military. I, I love my country. And um, holy cow, 1776. Uh, I just think that's an awesome label. The artwork there is just terrific. And both in content, and I like the style as well. I grew up in the 80s, so that kind of reminds me of the firebirds that were on the, on the car hoods, that sort of thing. And so I was very, I just couldn't resist because the price was low enough to where I went ahead and accepted the risk and and sure enough I smell it you know what it kind of it has a hint of the sandalwood type of scent that you get from 
Perazzo Red, and I'm a big fan of that scent. And so this may deliver to me the scent of the Perazzo Red for the performance of Holy Cow and not the performance of Perazzo. So I'm a big fan of that for sure. Now, um, I don't remember Sandalwood uh, being as much of the scent description. I would have been attracted to the soap otherwise. And so I'm sure there are going to be some other notes come out when I lather it up. But I'm very encouraged at, at first dry sniff. It smells very nice. And so I get the bonus of a scent that I like with a label that I just think is really cool. All right. Have I covered everything? I believe I have. I'm just kind of, I keep a log of what I get. And so I look back in my log and I reached around and I gathered all the stuff for you guys here. And I'm also testing the, the new little arm with a suction cup at the bottom that's right now holding my phone. And it's working well. Uh, so very cool. Hopefully the sound is good. The volume is good for you guys. And, uh, and there we go. It's a little bit harder to adjust it and tilt it left and right. It's one of those things where you move it a little bit, but it goes too much. And then you try to move it back and it goes too much. So we might have some tilted shaves in the future. All right, my wonderful friends. This has been today's, this mail call. And it's pretty much covered a lot of, a lot of August and probably some of July as well. Um, just got some great used deals. And uh, did I get anything new? Oh, I almost forgot. I think I forgot. Um, the, the, the Declaration Grooming Soap I told you about. So I'm using this Chisel Face Midnight Stag set that I purchased on an auction during the Lather Game. And I won that auction. Maybe it was after. Maybe it was shortly after. I can't remember. I won that auction. Had some guys going back and forth. One of the guys that uh, that wanted to buy it um, was going to destroy it, you know. And so, uh, so there were several guys that contacted me and said, "Man, I'm so glad you won that because I know you're going to enjoy it uh, because the the scent here with the Cologne is, is very intense. Some guys just can't handle it. Uh, Zachary, um, I believe, he and I were talking just recently about how he got a sample of Midnight Stag in with his uh, a collection, a sampler of chiseled face scents uh, of soaps. And so he's going to have a chance to try that out. And I'm sure and I hope he lets me know what he thinks of it when he does. Um, but... Uh, I was very glad and other guys contacted me and said, man, I know you're going to use that. I know you enjoy it. I'm so glad it didn't go to somebody who was just going to pitch it and rid the world of it. So I'm happy to be using it. But that was a charity auction. The, the money paid went toward Operation Kindness. Uh, and it was in honor of 120 and a 55, as well as the, uh, the charitable desires of Chewbacca who was the person who donated that. He could have sold it for a good penny, but he decided to donate it out of the goodness of his heart. And so the charity that he uh, wanted to benefit was a, a kind of an animal rescue charity, and that's Operation Kindness. And so that's where the money went. Um, he didn't pocket any proceeds or, you know, any base costs or anything like that. So he even ate the shipping. So tremendous guy, Chewbacca, and... Uh, that was just a part of the charity effort. There were other things, other charity parts uh, that uh, other guys did. One of those things where, hey, if you use thus and such this many times, I'm going to contribute toward it. And, you know, somebody else said, well, I'm going to match that. You know, everybody kind of got in on it. Different charities, the Jed Foundation, promoting mental health, was a, a big beneficiary of, of that. Uh, effort and some of the vendors got involved as well and uh, Ben from Mammoth he supports uh, human trafficking charities again wonderful wonderful charities there and and people just jumped in and we raised some thousands of dollars I can't remember the the real amount um, but it was maybe several thousand dollars 
by the time so many people joined in, you know, and that was really, really cool. Well, I guess to, to honor our efforts and to, to honor those of us who, who gave, the giving got multiplied because Scott Stewart of Declaration Grooming, unbeknownst to any of us, all of a sudden I was contacted by direct message on Reddit, said, hey, listen, let me have your address because you know Scott has done a, a soap and or, or wait no they didn't do it that way they uh, he gave me the URL they sent out the URL whenever it was ready and then we were able to go and and buy it um, but we weren't charged we were just charged like a dollar and we had to be charged a dollar because there's Shopify or whatever wouldn't give stuff away for free right so um, uh, or it's something like that. It was a super minimal cost, and this is that soap. I, I got it in the mail, and it is, uh, I don't know the joke. I need to look up the joke. You know, Scott is all about these little, you know, I mean, even the, the name of this base, Milk Steak, is something from, uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia, okay? And, and so he's always got these, these jokes going on with, with his products. Well, I need to look this one up. It's from a show I don't watch almost any of. I've seen one or two episodes. It's called Slut Dragon. <laughs> and uh, apparently there is a, uh, this is part of, I think Rick and Morty is an animated cartoon for adults, I believe, uh, maybe. I uh, don't know enough about it to even make that claim for sure. But I've seen a few episodes and there are definitely some funny parts to it. Uh, and so it might be for a generation that's a little bit younger than me, but Apparently, this is a, a part of that, uh, that humor line. And uh, when I smelled it, I really like the, uh, the scent of it, uh, fruity, um, so it'll be fun. It definitely kind of smells the color here, and, uh, and so I'm looking forward to, to using that. So uh, Scott basically made that available to anybody who uh, gave to the charity effort of the Lather Games. And it was never asked for. He just decided to do it. I mean, how awesome is that? Very, very cool. So, uh, Declaration Grooming, um, uh, Scott Stewart blessed everybody with <laughs> a very funny. Now I got to go look it up. Hey, if anybody knows the reference here, I'm going to go look it up anyway. But if you want to summarize it for me, the contents, that might help my understanding rather than uh, me finding something. Uh, online you may be able to summarize it better right so feel free to do that if you feel so inclined slot dragon <laughs> oh man that's funny okay and I don't even know the real joke it's just funny okay guys so um, so there we go um, for those of you who enjoy seeing gear um, this flies in the face of the shaves this month because it's all the same gear you know nothing wrong with that but this is a slightly different take as we show off different stuff. And I'll be using, I've used a few of these things already, like I mentioned, but I'm so looking forward to trying that mild plate on the carbon razor. I'm also looking forward to trying that plus plate because I only got a chance to try it once. I'm looking forward to trying it on uh, some more normal blades. I am looking forward to the Pearl, Pearl, the Pearl Flexi, using some more shaves with it. The, uh, the Noble Otter Udi Oud and the 1776. The, oh, the Paladin brush. I'm super curious as to whether that knot is going to be relaxed enough for me. Um, you know what? I have discovered a trend with many of these finest badger brushes. The two, ba excuse me, the two band knots. And this works that way with, works this way with declaration. And another one as well. The more of a light color I see down here near the handle, the more I'm probably gonna like it because that means that it's gonna be more relaxed and, and easier to splay. If I see a finest badge, I've seen finest badger brushes, declaration included, uh, where there was it was all black all the way to the handle, and they were too stiff for me. Now I don't know which brushes that applies to. I don't know if it applies to only half the brushes out there or if it's a good general rule. I haven't quite figured that out yet. But 
and so I'm encouraged. That makes me encouraged to think that I'm, I'm seeing some light colors down there. And so he sure is stiff right now, boy, but that's okay. When he gets wet, all that may change, put some uses on him, but the handle's gorgeous. I'm looking forward to trying that out. And uh, I don't know when I'm gonna get around to finding, sometimes when I have a nice handle like this, it takes me a while to figure out what knot I wanna put in it. Um, oh, and one thing I didn't show you, uh, with that, the eBay lot, oh, I don't think I showed you any of these. Um, this was an eBay lot that I purchased, and the price I paid for the lot, I got uh, five different single-edge razors, like this auto strop, and this is a U.S. Army version auto strop. Now, these are a dime a dozen. There are tons of these available on eBay. Maybe not the Army version, but auto strops are. And so definitely people aren't really using them. Uh, and I don't know if I will either. If I can figure out a way to get a single edge blade in there, um, then I might try it out. Um, but uh, it is not something people usually stick with. Uh, but it came along with everything. There were some gems. Um, there was a G-Bar, a Micromatic Open Comb, a... Uh, a gem junior a um, and a couple other uh, single edges but all those I uh, owe in a 1912 um, 1912 clone um, and but I had existing versions of all those um, but what I didn't have was this guy right here now I did a little bit of internet searching and I think this is a ladies razor Palmco is under the thing here. It does appear to be uh, not really premium uh, stuff. It kind of looks like a Mercure razor under there, kind of that, that rough finish, you know. But here's the neat thing about it. Uh, feels per pretty ergonomic with this little waist right here and the big, the big end. And I think it might be a ladies razor. It curves the blade in different ways on each side. Here, it's an arc, just a symmetrical, straightforward arc. And there's quite a bit of aggression on there. So I'm guessing this was for a lady shaving her legs, right? Now on this side, it's a slant, a normal slant. So we'll just see, we'll just see what happens. I can definitely try the, the slant part out on my face. And who knows, how, depending on how it feels, I may try the other part as well. I wonder if that other part could do a good job of shaving certain areas on my neck because of the concave nature. I don't know. I didn't even know this razor existed until I saw it in this eBay ad. But I, I, I did search for Palmco razor and uh, there was information out there for it. Uh, so it wasn't really all that hidden. Um, and then another razor that came in it, you can see this kind of vintage looking box here. Well, this is a Mercure box. It looks like a Gillette one, but it's a Mercure. And this, I believe, I'm almost certain, is a 33C. Now, this looks like a modern 33C. See, it has the kind of the, the rough texture, the not quite full finished plating underneath, you know, that the typical Mercures have. And it definitely looks like the 33C. Now, is it a vintage 33C or a more modern? My guess would be modern. But, uh, you know, I'll use it. And we'll just see how it feels, um, but it's kind of a vintage case. Now, I don't know. What, I don't know what years they produced this case, and so maybe this is not vintage, but maybe it's maybe it's ten years old. I I don't know enough about Mercours. All right, and then the last thing in that same lot, and the reason really that I bought that lot, I didn't need any of this uh, str uh, single edge razors. I I didn't buy the lot for that curvy lady razor. And I definitely didn't buy it for the Mercure. I bought it for this because the price of the lot was pretty much what I might pay for a cool handle like this. And this has this synthetic in it. it maybe it's a synthetic horse. Um, if you guys, if any of you guys recognize the knot, if you're into synthetics, then uh, let me know what it is. Looks like maybe it was in this angle when, or, or against something when it was hot because you can see how the synthetic fibers have kind of melted into position, have softened into position. I don't think it's gonna affect the shave once you get lather in there. But the handle looked very ergonomic. The handle is made by Wild West. It's a limited edition handle. 
And uh, the colors may not be my favorite because I usually like to stick with one motif, like the, like the blue and then the dark. I usually don't, or the amber and then the dark. I don't usually like to mix the blue and the amber and the dark, but I couldn't see that exactly on the image. And I saw the ergonomics, and I know that Wild West makes nice quality handles. And so for the price, really, of the handle, I got all the other stuff, too. And so that's why we have that. Plus, I'll be able to try out this synthetic knot. Maybe it's a synthetic horse. Let me get my lighting over here, and maybe that'll help you guys. It's bright. Maybe it'll help you guys to, to see it better. Maybe it's providing too much, uh, too much contrast, you know, to where you guys can't actually see it any better. I don't know. So there we go. Um, it, uh, it, it feels very soft, like most synthetics. Now, when I push it back up against like that, I start to feel the firmness. And so my guess is it's going to go the same route as most of the synthetics for me. But why not? Before I yank it out, we'll give it a shot. Uh, so this is the reason I bought this cool handle. It was the reason I bought this this whole eBay lot because it was a good price for just that one handle. All right, folks. Now we come to the end. I'm glad that I remembered about the Slut Dragon and that I hadn't mentioned the other items because I kind of got all the way around and I thought I'd covered everything. Um, very good. All right, folks. Uh, thank you for watching. And I hope that uh, some of this stuff has been neat. Sometimes it's just fun to hear about different stuff. Um, and this is a little bit of a forecasting so that you can uh, make notes about uh, mental notes as far as uh, I'm going to pay attention to his channel and watch for the use of the uh, Author's Ridge or the Slut Dragon or the 1776 or the brushes, you know, whatever might pique your fancy. Well, there we go. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and, uh, and that's my mail call for kind of late July and August. Um, I just ran into some great deals. Um, and I also wanted to brag about Midwest shaving and how they handled my issue. And uh, I found great deals on there with the aftershaves uh, from fine accoutrements. And then when one went wrong, even though it looked like it shouldn't have gone wrong because he packed it well, uh, he addressed it. And in a few days I had my, my refill, my, uh, I had a replacement bottle so there we go quality quality work there and holy cow how neat i mean how neat is this little base plate they curved it all up it's like a skeleton and it feels like a like an iron snowflake it's just it's it's neat and dainty but super strong uh, i mean that's going to be that's going to be fun and neat to shave with how about that all right you guys take care this is sugar daddy shaves